What's good, YouTube, man? It's Gabriel, just having fan TV, man. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and all the videos. So let's talk about today's topic, man. So I want to talk about Rashad Bateman, right? Um, I think that Rashad Bateman has nothing to worry about in terms of if the Ravens were to make a play for DeAndre Hopkins, right? And um, so something I've been saying online and things like that is that, you know, if Rashad Bateman would feel some type of way if DeAndre Hopkins were to come here, right? Would he ask for a trade? Would he ask out of Baltimore? Because we've seen certain situations where, you know, that has happened here recently, right? So we talk about, um, what we talk about? Sorry, we talk about Mark Andrews and Hayden Hurst, right? Hayden Hurst was the first round pick. Um, he got hurt. Mark Andrews ascended, became an all pro tight end. To me, currently the second best tight end in the league, right behind Travis Kelsey, all right? We saw Orlando Brown Jr., right? Kind of similar situation. Ronnie Stanley got hurt. He was already he was a good player, Ronnie Stanley, but he got hurt. Orlando Brown got that chance to play left tackle. He never wanted to let it go, partly because of his father's legacy, partly because we know left tackles get paid more, right? All right. To me, those situations are very, very different, okay? Because like I said, Hayden Hurst lost, uh, lost all his job to a better player. Um, simple as that. Um, Orlando Brown Jr. was stuck and set on playing one position. He didn't even want to consider playing right tackle, right? Uh, the Raven, if he would have considered playing right tackle, Orlando Brown Jr. would probably still be a Raven right now. So I don't feel like this situation, those two situations are even close to what would happen if DeAndre Hopkins were to come here and be a Raven, right? Um, so listen, Rashad Bateman, he is the present and he is the future of this team. The Ravens drafted him in the first round because they felt as though he could be a number one wide receiver, right? That's all Lamar Jackson calls him. That's all Lamar Jackson talks about him as is that's wide receiver one right there, right? So if the Ravens were to say get DeAndre Hopkins, right? I can't imagine Rashad Bateman feeling that threatened. And here's why. DeAndre Hopkins turns 31 next week. So he's 30 right now. I think he turns 31 on June 6th, right? I just looked it up not too long ago. Rashad Bateman is 23 years old. He'll turn 24 sometime during the season, I think in November, right? So he's not even 25 years old yet. So we're talking about a player who hasn't really even entered this prime. So, yes, he wants to prove he's the main guy. Of course he does. But at the same time, let's think about it, right? If you're Rashad Bateman, and I say they bring in DeAndre Hawkins here, you're looking at DeAndre Hawkins, who's 31. You're looking at Odell, who's 30 years old, will be 31. Um... How can those guys be a threat to your job? They're, they're really not. You're still going to be wide receiver one, wide receiver two at, at, at the at the farthest you'll go down, right? Um, this talk of he'll be wide receiver three because Odell is here, I don't believe that, right? We got to think about the current state of Odell Beckham right now, all right? You know, he's coming off of a year of not playing, coming off a significant injury. Um, so this probably eased back into it. I can't imagine he's going to play 80, 85% of the snaps. I can't imagine that, right? So, Rashad Bateman is going to have a major role in this offense. Like I said, he's going to be number one or number two. No matter what happens in this offseason, right? Whether the Ravens get DeAndre Hopkins, whether they don't. Rashad Bateman is going to be one or two on this team as far as wide receivers is concerned. So, this idea that um, he might tap out or he might um, say, hey, I want to get out of here just because DeAndre Hopkins is here, I don't really buy that, right? That's a read to the article today for the Athletic saying that, you know, the Ravens have to have a delicate mix of how they um, pursue – you know, Hopkins to add another guy into the mix because of, you know, egos and things like that in the locker room. Now, while I agree with that, right, you there are there is the human element of football, right? It's not just as simple as these guys are here to play football and that's it. They go home. And that's all they do. No, like right? They are human beings, right? Could Rashad Bateman feel a way like, hey, they're bringing in another guy here? Sure. But at the same time, this is how I would view it if I'm Bateman, right? Even Zay Flowers, because I know my time is coming. Um, if Hopkins was to come here, the Ravens are going to give him a, a two-year deal at max, right? I can't see them locking in Hopkins for three years. Man. That's just my opinion. I, can't, I couldn't see that, right? So your two-year deal, you have the opportunity to learn from two of the best receivers in the game from their time, right? So when Odell was healthy and on top, he was one of the best receivers. DeAndre Hopkins has been consistently one of the best receivers. Last year, he was dominant playing with Colt McCoy and playing with Colin Murray. So it didn't matter who was throwing him in football. He was doing this job. So if I'm if I'm Zay Flowers, if I'm Rashad Bateman, I'm taking the opportunity to learn from these guys. I'm not looking at it as these guys are gonna take up all my stats, all my opportunities. Um, Zay Flowers, especially, you're a rookie, you know what I mean? You you're gonna get in the mix, you're gonna play, but Bateman, I get it to a certain extent. You're coming into year three, you're worried about your fifth year option, you're worried about potentially getting paid. But at the same time, let's let's, let's step back and look at this as like Hopkins is going to cut, is going to draw a cornerback one coverage and maybe even some help on the other side, right? You're going to get the feast on cornerback twos all season. And I saw you mix up uh, um, Xavier and Howard. I've seen you have 
he should have got more targets during the Patriots game because he was getting over during that game, right? So I've seen you go against good teams with good cornerbacks, teams that play good defense and win. Now imagine going against that with the cornerback too. So to me, I wouldn't worry about that part of it. The biggest thing that's going to be the drawback of DeAndre Hopkins coming here to the Ravens is not a word about whose feelings may or may not be hurt or whatever, things like that, right? Sir Hallison made a good point. Go out there and compete, right? I agree with that. I do understand people saying that people are going to, that Bateman or whoever might feel a certain way about it. I get that. Um, but at the end of the day, you're trying to win, right? So for me, the biggest thing that's going to be a drawback as times of getting DeAndre Hopkins to be a Baltimore Ravens is how much his contract is going to be. Now, we can say all day long, right? Oh, he's going to take a pay cut to play with a, a Pat Mahomes, a Josh Allen, a Lamar Jackson, Jalen Hurts. Yeah, he'll take a pay cut to play with these kind of guys. But the simple fact of the matter is that we don't know, right? Uh, a couple days ago, there was a report from uh, Pro Football Talk. See, Mike Florio, I know it's Florio. We know, he, we know how he can be with his sources, right? But I'm just going to put it out there. He said that. DeAndre Hawkins' next contract, he's, he is uh, seeking a significant contract. What does significant mean? I don't know. But if I'm Hopkins, right, and I'm looking at the Ravens, I see you paid Odell Beckham's $15 to $18 million, depending on how he performs next season. Would I come here knowing that I'm a better I'm a better wide receiver than Odell Beckham is right now? I've done it. I've proved over the last couple of years. I've been healthy, all of that. Only that set me back is obviously the, uh, the PED thing, but I'm past that now, right? Would I come here and play for less than fifteen million dollars? I don't know. You have to do. You will have to weigh how important winning is to him, because of course winning is important. Of course it is. But football is too dangerous of a game, too violent of a sport to say I'm going to take a significant pay cut. Um, at any other position, to my, my opinion, at any other position besides quarterback, right? Now, obviously, if you made a lot of money in your career, you could say that. And Judge Hawkins has made a significant amount of money. Of course he has, but. He's still taking on a lot of risk, taking that kind of pay cut, okay? Being 31 years old, something goes wrong. That's it, right? So that, there's that report. Then also today, DeAndre Hawkins, he just signed with um, Clutch Sports, right? You know, LeBron and Rich Paul and all of them. Uh, I forgot the agent name. I think his name some. It's something Crenshaw. I'm sorry, but I can't remember his name. He represents uh, Devontae Smith on the Eagles and a couple other NFL players as well. You know what I mean? Clutch Sports obviously has a big cast over, you know, NBA, NFL players, things like that. So, um, point being, Clutch Sports, they just signed DeAndre Hopkins. They landed a, a big fish in DeAndre Hopkins. I can't imagine that their first thing they're going to do is they're going to say to him is, yeah, let's, let's get let's get a workout deal for you to take a pay cut somewhere else. That's not what Clutch Sports is known for. It's having their clients take pay cuts, all right? Now, I'm not saying Delta Hopkins wants to be the highest paid receiver in the NFL. Of course not, right? But the Ravens have put a significant investment into Odell Beckham. Like I said, 15 to $18 million. How much can they put into DeAndre Hopkins and still have enough to upgrade certain areas of the team, right? Because somebody's going to get hurt during training camp, right? It, it happens every year. It's just part of the business. Um, you still need to upgrade certain areas. We talked about pass rusher and things like that. So the competition aspect it doesn't bother me, right? DeAndre Hopkins coming here should not discourage Rashad Beekman. This should motivate him. Because, listen, no matter who comes here, you're going to be wide receiver one or two, Bateman. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm wearing the Batman shirt. This is, you know, not not uh not on purpose, but, you know, talking about the Batman, Rashad Bateman. But you're going to be wide receiver one or two regardless of who comes here. So, DeAndre Hopkins being here shouldn't really mean anything to him. So, to me, the idea that he'll want out because of that, I don't believe that. Right? He's still going to be a significant part of his office no matter how you slice it. The biggest thing is I don't know if the Ravens can afford DeAndre Hopkins. And that's just exactly how I feel about it, right? I would love for him to be here, but realistically, I don't know if they can afford him. Simple as that. We'll see where his priority lies. I could be very, very wrong. You know, the Chiefs and the Bills are very interested in DeAndre Hopkins. And they have absolutely no cash space. You know, the Ravens have, I believe, around $12 million. The Chiefs and the Bills have, like, I think one and two million dollars, something maybe three million dollars uh, in cash space. Okay, something like that. They're very, very on the low end of that spectrum. So obviously they'll they'll move some deals around, work it around to where they can uh, bring him in potentially. Um, so yeah, I get all that. So, but in my opinion, and the, the whole point of this video, really, is Rashad Bateman has nothing to worry about. He is the future. He's the present, and he is the future of the Ravens receiving core. 
The Ravens haven't drafted a receiver who has made it to a Pro Bowl. They dra they got two guys on the roster right now who could do that in the coming years, Bateman and Zay Flowers. So, Rashad Bateman has nothing to worry about. The Ravens have, I believe, he's in the major plans for the Ravens. And um, signed DeAndre Hopkins would not put him in any kind of danger of being out of those plans. He's going to be wide receiver one, wide receiver two, whether whether Hopkins is here or not. So, um, that's my thoughts on it. That's my opinion on it, man. I just wanted to get that out there. Uh, let me know what you guys think on the video, man. But I'm going to get out of here. It's Gabriel, just on the Fan TV. I'm out.